the island's octopus. The crab's mortal enemy. The octopus ambushes the crabs in shallow pools as the tide recedes. The nimble crabs must dash across 100 meters of rocks and pools to get to their food source, seaweed that is exposed at low tide. The octopuses eat up to three times their body weight each day. For an adult, that's the equivalent of 15 crabs. At low tide, the intrepid survivors finally reach the seaweed-covered rocks and a well-deserved meal. The respite is short-lived. They have a mere half hour before the tide turns. And they have to make their way back through another marine minefield. Chain moray eels. Veritable crab-killing machines. These snake-like fish have two rows of teeth on their upper and lower jaws to grasp and crush the crab's shells. Their powerful sense of smell allows them to detect even the faintest odors dissolved in the seawater.
Crabs are at the mercy of eels as the tide comes in, and octopuses as it goes out. The two predators share the same taste in food. Fernando de Noronha is a small-scale example of interspecies rivalry. Throughout the world, cephalopods and fish compete for the same prey. So if the fish are removed, the cephalopods have access to more prey in order to grow to adulthood and reproduce. Competition is also a concern for cephalopods on the sandbanks off the coast of Anilao in the Philippines. Here, several species of cephalopod thrive despite the presence of numerous predators and competitors in the form of fish, fishermen, and tourists. This featureless underwater landscape provides no protection so the inhabitants have to come up with various strategies to survive. One species of cephalopod has evolved an eye-catching tactic to keep it safe from predators. The flamboyant cuttlefish. Its ostentatious outfit serves as a clear warning that it may be toxic. Cuttlefish are dependent on an internal shell in order to float. But the flamboyant cuttlefish's shell is so small that they are often forced to walk on the seabed. In nature, Predators are wary of animals that are different from their usual prey. And flamboyant cuttlefish are highly unusual. They may be the only poisonous cuttlefish in the world, and they use two arms and fins to walk along the seabed. Their attention-grabbing appearance allows them to hunt without fear in the middle of the day. In general, they feed on tiny shrimp. Once again, this cephalopod is in direct competition with fish. Their main rival here is the sole. But the cuttlefish has a major advantage. It uses a chemical in order to paralyze the shrimp before eating it. This highly nutritious diet allows the cuttlefish to reach adulthood by the time it is six months old. Before they are a year old, the females lay between five and 25 eggs. With few predators and its feisty nature, the flamboyant cuttlefish is on its way to a population expansion. On the sandbanks surrounding the tropical islands of the Philippines, most of the flamboyant cuttlefish's less flashy neighbors take a more discreet route to avoid predators. Using camouflage, by burrowing, or even by dressing up. The coconut octopus is so-called because it selects and uses coconut shells left behind by humans. It is the only marine invertebrate in the world known to use tools. This octopus is sizing up two coconut halves. It seems to be considering its choice carefully. The shell isn't much of a hiding place. But it's sufficient to ambush wandering crabs.
The coconut octopus is very selective about its shelter. It must be transportable. Another coconut octopus has been unable to locate a second-hand shell and lacks a hunter's blind. It could always bury itself in the sand in order to hide, but then it wouldn't be able to move and catch its diet of crabs, fish, and other invertebrates. It is better to look for some way to hide while it is on the move. Unfortunately, at night, all the good shells have been taken. It will need to wait for daybreak. At dawn, it prepares to go out and continue its quest. But a local troublemaker has other plans. The striped pufferfish. Despite its bloated, benign appearance, this hungry fish is on the lookout for prey. Its four flat teeth anchored in its strong jaws are ideal for tearing off cephalopod limbs. As soon as its back is turned, the octopus looks for some kind of armor. These clamshells might do the trick. Given the circumstances, anything is worth a try. Well before humans began cutting coconuts in two, octopuses were using the shells from their distant cousins jellyfish. The coconut octopus's voracious appetite has forced it to become nomadic. Carrying its personal effects in case of emergencies. Its appetite for food is equaled only by its eagerness to try new things. Luckily, humans have left an array of rubbish in their wake that should be recycled. This old tin can is ideal for protecting the octopus from the pufferfish's jaws. Safe for now. But this underwater fortress creates rivalry among the other octopuses. It must be defended tooth and nail, or in this case, beak and sucker. coconut octopus retains its rusty refuge. Through trial and error, it has discovered that it provides the perfect protection.